Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today's part two of my dynamic filtering of combo boxes so they load faster and all that good stuff. Go watch part one and then come on back. All right, so yesterday we made our last name query where we have, where, where we, blah, blah, blah. try saying that 10 times fast, where we have a unique list of last names and then we've got our customers and our orders and we've got the combo box here that doesn't really do anything yet and then we set it so the customer combo box only loads one record the record that you're on okay so now we need to make it so that this also updates if you allow yourself to move from record to record because sometimes what you can do is you could come straight into the order form if you allow this in your database right and if you move from record to record you have to make sure that you refresh this box too. So in addition to loading uh, this list of customers when the form loads, we need to put it in what event? The on current event, on current event. If you're not familiar with that event, I got a video on it. I'll put a link down below, but let's go into the property or the, uh, the code for the form. We've got this in form load, right? I wanna put the same code in the on current event. Do we copy and paste this block of code? No, we don't do that. If it's more than just one, maybe two lines, you don't do that. You make it its own sub. So up here, we're going to say private sub, and let's call this uh, load customer combo. Combo. Okay. And then we take all of this stuff and we put it up in meow. So now inside of the form load event, we just say load customer combo. And we can also do that in the on current event and say load customer combo. So both of those events will run that code. Okay. All right. Save it. Technically, technically, you don't really even need it in the form load event because the form combo, uh, the, the form current event loads after form combo. But I like to do this just in case in the future I decide to change this. This one will still be there to run. It, does it hurt if it runs twice in this case? No, not really. All right. Anyways. So now if I come into here and go into here and move from record to record, you can see that that is not updated. What happened? Here. Oh, it's in there. It's just not refreshing. Okay. Yeah. We got to also do a refresh. Usually just changing the row source of a combo box causes the list to update, but it doesn't always. The form current event doesn't make it. So we're going to say customer combo dot requery there. That'll, that'll force that at the update when you move from record to record. You ready? And there it goes. Now it's updating. Okay. All right. So we've got that there. Now let's say we want to change this. So from Neil Peart, it goes to someone else, right? Now I can't pick anybody else here because we only loaded that record. So that's where, we're, that's where this guy is going to come into effect. Okay. After this shorter list, if you pick someone, like if I pick Rost, I then want this box to show the Rosts. Okay. So again, let's go back into here. Let's go open this guy up, go to events, go into the after update event. All right. If I change this filter box, then I want to see the list of that customer. So in here, in the last name combo, I'm going to say when this guy's changed, right? Customer combo dot row source equals select our same select statement as before, basically customer ID comma last name and double, double quote comma double, double quote, and first name, and space, and let's continue it to the next line, from customer T, where last name equals, and then we're gonna, we're, we have to put an open quote, so that's a double quote, close the string, and last name combo, and quote, 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 because we have to put another set of double quotes inside the string. Right. And if you're, if you're, if you, this confuses you, that's okay. It confuses everybody. I got several videos on it. Look up my string concatenation videos and my double, double quotes videos. Again, I'll put links to those down below. I'm going to make a note here. Con -cat. Okay. Now that we've updated the row source, we're going to move the cursor to it. So we're going to move to that combo box and open it up for the user as like a, you know, we're, we're, we're nice people. We're nice. We're thoughtful programmers, customer combo dot set focus so that we can customer combo dot drop down. We're going to open that sucker up, save it, debug, compile, come back out here, close it, close it. 
open it. All right, this is Mr. Spock's order, but I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to pick Kirk. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at what we have here. I see all the Kirks in here. And I can pick James Kirk. And I can go to a different record. Now, this isn't going to change up top here. We're going to get to that in a minute. All right, but you can see how it's still got all those in there. Okay, so if I want to drop this down now and change this to a Rost, I now see all the Rosts in there. Or I can drop this down and pick Peart and go back to Neil Peart. Okay. Now, it'd be nice if when we move from record to record or when we change this guy, this updates as well so that it doesn't confuse the user, right? There's a couple ways you could do it. Um, I'm going to say up here, because when you pick the thing first after the after update, it's going to be correct up there. Because if I come in here and go LaForge, it's going to, you know, LaForge is there. The problem is when you move to a different record. All right, so in our code that updates this guy, we're going to also update this guy. Now, you could do a D lookup and look up the last name of this customer, but again, we're trying to avoid extra lookups. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to sneak the last name by itself into this combo box as another column, a hidden column. All right, so open up the properties for this guy. Go to format. We're going to make column count three. And the column widths, let's change. I don't like that 1.77. Let's make this two and then a semicolon and a zero. So we got zero, two, zero. zero. The first one, column zero, is the hidden ID. Column one, the second column, I know it's confusing. The, col the second column is column one, and that's two inches. Then we're going to have a third column, that's column two, that's also zero inches. Change this list width here also to two. So it matches this total width here. Okay, now we got to fill that guy with an extra column. So come into here, right up top here. So after last name, first name, we're going to go comma last name. So now we're loading the last name into the combo box as well. Okay, so now we can say right here, last name combo equals customer combo dot column Two. It's the third column. It's zero based. So it's zero, one, two. And don't forget up here to now say last name combo equals blank. Setting the value to blank. All right. All right. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Yes, it's on a t-shirt. Go get one. <laughs> close it. Close it. Open it. Let's go into orders. Okay. Look, the filter updated. All right. Let's turn the filter off down here. Boop. That goes to Kirk and then me and then Kirk again, and then Reynolds, and you can see how the boxes are updating automatically. If you wanna change this one from Mr. Spock, can't change it here, because it's just Mr. Spock in that box, but drop this down, and there they all are. Go to Lifeson, and now you can pick Alex, see? So both of those are staying in tandem, and they're working together, just like synchronized swimmers. I mean, you know, there's only two of them, so there's literally the minimum you need to have synchronized swimmers is two. And again, if after this, if your box is still loading slow, if all of the, oh, oh, hey, oh, someone's beaming in. That's just a pack lead trying to sell me some old tech. Um, if this is still slow, you can add another box or some way to, you know, filter this beyond that. You know, make it, do it alphabetically, do an A through Z box and then have it so that where these people have a last name that begin with P or whatever. All right, but this just, this should be a starting point for you to teach you how to do this. How to, how to take this box. Don't load all those records every time you load this form, right? But that uh, that should get you started, whether you're working with Access Over a Network or even if you got SQL Server, this will definitely save you some time and load up your combo boxes properly. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. 
Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.